Okay guys, today we're in Newcastle under Lyme at the Players Snooker and Pool Lounge with Gareth Potts, the best pool player in the world. Right. Thanks for having us. No problem, thank so you. We're going to have a game of snooker. How much snooker do you play? Not so much anymore. Uh, I did used to practice quite a bit back in back in the day, obviously with, um, with the, you know, the Mark Connection and a few of the, few of the snooker pros that sort of played out here. So I did used to play quite a bit, but not so much anymore. Shows, shows your break off then. So you play a lot with your uh, brother-in-law. Mark. Yeah, whenever I go over there, uh, he has me picking the balls out for him. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, like I say, I used to play quite a lot, but whenever whenever we go over there, you know, if he's practicing for a tournament, obviously I take my cue and you know, give him give him the odd game and pick a few balls out, a few blisters on my fingers, to be honest. <laughs> Is there ever, any days ever where you beat him? Do you, does he give you a start or you play level? No, I always we always we always play off levels. Yeah. Um, oh, you've been learning off him. Look, granted, I've been learning away. from him like. granted, straight away. <laughs> You always play level. Yeah, I always play levels, and yeah, to, I have uh, I have nicked the odd, odd set to be honest, but yeah. yeah, obviously most of the time I'm fielding. Of <laughs> course, this is this is your club. You own this club. Yeah, right, this yeah? is the club. Yeah, so um, yeah, we've got you know quite a few snooker tables. We're predominantly English pool, but um, yeah, we, we we do have some snooker tables. Um, so I, you know, before I did used to get on here and practice quite a bit, but. Uh, and I find that it helps with the pool, you know, it straightens your cue action out and right, I okay. find as though it definitely helps with the technique. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, because one of the things I found when I play pool, I find it very difficult to have the same cue action I've yeah. got in snooker in pool. But you seem, when I watch you, you've got the same, you seem to have just the same cue action. Yeah, the same cue action. I think for, for the English pool especially, I, I try to keep it the same. Now I play, you know, more of the Chinese stuff. I think it has to change for that. Right. Um, I think with the, you know, when I play snooker, I find my, my cue action, especially my back swing gets longer because you're know, okay. trying to generate the power and, you know, move the cue ball further around the table. But um, yeah, I do try to keep it, you know, pretty yeah. you know, similar yeah. as I can. So what did you play first? Snooker or pool? Uh, pool, pool. Yeah, Did I you? started off playing uh, English English pool. My uh, my parents owned um, owned a pub called right. the, the the Winchester, uh, where I grew up on a, a council estate. So right. uh, I started playing pool, standing on a crate at seven, at, at seven years old. Seven. Um, and yeah, I'd always really just stuck with you know playing eight ball. Right, um, okay. you know, I was quite fortunate enough to you know have a, a couple of sponsorship deals early on, which enabled me to obviously you know practice at a you know, a young age when I left school and yeah. that sort of stuff. So yeah, pool was, was the first love really. Right. So there was, there was never a, never a decision to go one way or the other? Um, was it always, always there pool? was, yeah, there was, there was a little bit of a, a, a close sort of call when uh, halfway through my English career in about 2008, 2009, there was um, a huge break in the organization. So, right. uh, the organisation split, a load of politics, and around that time I did consider going down the snooker route. Right. That's at the time when the Chinese pool came along for me. Oh, okay. So it was a case of stick with what I know, really. Right, okay. Oh, I got away with it. Oh, got away lucky. With it. <laughs> well, um, so what's your, in terms of, well, pool, in terms of what's, what's your practice routine? Daily practice. You, you, I mean, how many tournaments a year would you play in? in yeah, I mean, with, with the, the Chinese days now, I mean, uh, I do sort of eight trips a year. Right. Half of those are tournaments, half are promotional work. Nice. The big one is obviously the Masters. Yeah. Uh, you know, they've they've just um, you know made that the f the biggest first prize in the history of Q Sports. That's now seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the incredible, winner. Incredible, incredible, isn't There's it? There's talk of that being a million plus in the next year to two years. Obviously, when there's that sort of prize money and prestige that there is in China now, um, obviously putting the hours in, yeah. you know, is important. Is it similar to snooker practice? And you've got routines on the table. Got routines, and you know, obviously, you know, I've seen that, you know, what what you did, and when you were younger, I've you know, I've I've, I've seen on the YouTube and your interviews that you did a lot of solo practice. So I do the same. To be honest, I do quite a lot on my own. It is important to play people yeah. for the match practice, course, you know, yeah, getting yeah. used to that sort of battling type. Yeah. mentality in a match but yeah I do also do you know quite a bit of solo and, and obviously treat it like a job really yeah because I've seen them um, on your on your Instagram if anyone wants to see that probably the best practice routines 
toughest routines you'll see on any billiard table. I mean, they're unbelievable, the things you... Are they just for, like... Sure, are they your actual routines you're doing? Well, yeah, I mean, to be honest, unbelievable. yeah, they just started off as I was just trying to make the, because anyone that's played any Chinese pool will perhaps yeah. understand how tight the pockets are, and it is quite tough because... How many takes are some of these things? You're not doing it in the first goal. Quite surely. a lot, to be honest, quite a lot. <laughs> They're yeah, so yeah, difficult. Quite a lot. They're so difficult. And I ju it started off where during lockdown, I was just like, right, I'd come in, you know, do a few hours practice, and I just thought, what can be the toughest routine that I can do? Yeah. That, you know, people that understand Chinese pool will go, wow. So I just started putting a few balls on the rail, and it was like, oh, I did that one, and started making it a little bit harder. And then I just kept thinking about what can I do to make this harder? And that's how they started, yeah. really. <laughs> Actually, I mean, I'd, I'd... they're astounding. So I'd imagine. With those sort of prizes, $750,000, surely going to get some snooker players looking at that. Or even, I mean, how many different types of pool is there? How many different disciplines? There's a lot. I mean, obviously, you've got the American side of the game, and within the American pool, there's eight ball, nine ball, ten ball. So there's three. They also play what they call straight pool, which is, some might know it as 14 to 1. So Is that what they played in, in the Hustler? Yes. Yeah, that's what they play in that. So basically, straight pool is you just see how many balls you can pop, wrap the balls up, and you've got a total number. So within an American pool table, there's probably four or five disciplines. They also play another one called bank pool, which Americans call bank. We call it a double. So you basically have to double every single ball. Really? So there's loads of different sort of variations of games on the one table. And similar to Chinese, really, there's... Um, I'll point to pink, by the way. Oh, sorry, I have, to, I, have to, I have to get these out. <laughs> on a black spot then. Has Mark told you not to pick any balls out for me? <laughs> oh yeah, sorry, so in total how many do you reckon? So, yeah. so all these other different disciplines must be looking at that prize when thinking yeah. we need to start playing Chinese. Pool. Yeah, and a lot of the snooker players have sort of already signed up to play some of the, uh, the, the Chinese events. And like you say, with that first prize being where it's at, I'm pretty sure that some of the snooker players will think, you know, with a, with a few months practice, because Chinese eight ball is effectively a hybrid cue sport between all three of the main cue sports. So you've got snooker, American pool and English pool. Yeah. Chinese eight ball would effectively be a hybrid. So it looks like a bit of a mini version of a snooker table. Right. Same cloth. Yeah. American balls, but it's eight ball. Yeah. So you have the hybrid of all. So it would appeal to almost every single Q sport player really. Yeah. Whether you play snooker, whether you play American pool or English pool, every player would perhaps think, I might be okay at that. Because yeah. obviously how we met, we met working for the same company in China. I, I don't know how long ago, was that the first World Championship? Yeah, first it Masters? was the first <coughs> Masters, which was 2013. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, playing <coughs> Chinese eight ball, I, I think it's, well, I found it difficult. I found it really difficult because as you say, it's, it's snooker pockets, but with the, the nine ball balls. Yeah. So I found the pockets so, so tight, but when but watching some of the Chinese players and yourself, they, you smash them yeah. down, down the cushion. You almost like smash it through the rail, almost smash it through the knuckle. Right. Um, and a lot of players will be used to watching the American pool where they play on almost four, four and a half inch pockets generally, uh, where the Chinese pockets are with the same balls, but are played on 3.35 inch right. to give you an idea of the difference of the size of the pockets. Do you, do you have a favorite, a favorite form? Or pools, English uh, or Chinese? Or? Well, obviously English was the first love. English is where you know I'd sort of won the world titles and started out at. China is where it's at now. Oh, look at these, look. Free the pink spot. So yeah, now Chinese is where I'm at. So yeah, I'd have to say that. Because that, that must be, because in terms of, you've got tournaments with different disciplines. Because mm. I can't imagine, obviously snooker is just snooker. So how do you devote different practice just, just for whatever tournament's coming up then? Yeah, and the biggest problem is, is English eight ball is the only cue sport in the world where the balls are different sizes. So the cue ball of course, yeah, yeah. is a different size to the object ball. So that on itself is obviously very difficult to practice for. And it's the physics of the balls of exactly what's happening yeah. with the cue ball, because obviously it's not a natural line off the object ball because it's lighter and smaller. It yeah. takes a really wide line. So practicing for that after, especially playing Chinese pool, the size of the balls, it's, um, yeah, it can be, be quite challenging. And that's why, you know, I've always been, well, once I finished playing English pool, I sort of dedicated the last 10 years to playing Chinese yeah. pool for that reason. Yeah. But I, I remember quite a funny story, really, about when um, 
I played obviously that the first time we met in China was when we put, I played in the Chinese eight ball masters and yeah. uh, I, I got to the final and ended up playing Chris Malley in the final. And that was the first time that I'd met you. And obviously I grew up you know, watching you win almost every single tournament. <laughs> so you know, I, was, I, was a, I was a huge fanboy, and then all of a sudden I'm playing this big event in China this big final, which to me was the biggest final that I've ever played in. Yeah, yeah. Certainly for the biggest prize money that I'd ever played for. And you're sitting there, I knew you were in the arena watching <laughs> the match. So I was actually more nervous about playing in front of you, to be honest, than playing the match. I mean, I was so bad at pool. I mean, I just, I mean, like, you know, I've, I've made some comments that like pools, drafts and, and snookers, chess and that. Does that annoy pool players when, you, when, when it gets talked? Because there's, I mean, listen, I mean, there's, there's less balls to pop, but the skill, because what I find, um, I used to play like a snooker, mm. positional play, and then you'd pot like five balls or something, and you're left in, in nowhere. Yeah. And I think that's that's the beauty of pool, isn't it? It's the yeah. patterns of clearing the art up. The of the patterns is the is the skill. Yeah. And I think the general perception of snooker players is that uh, the general perception is among snooker players and perhaps snooker fans is that. If you're good at snooker, yeah, you you're automatically, automatically go. good yeah. at pool. And that really isn't the case. And I suppose over the last two or three years, that's probably been seen a little bit with some of the snooker players that have played Chinese pool and more recently played in the ultimate pool, the English pool. Right. It really isn't quite as easy. Well, as even Judd went and played in the US Open, didn't yeah. he? And the first proper player he played, he lost 9-0. Lost 9-0. And, and on a nine ball, you, where you would think snooker players would just put everything. Well, you would think he's playing on four and a half inch pockets. The way he They're pots They're literally balls. like buckets down the rails. The yeah. way he pots with his ability, you would yeah. think it's impossible for him to ever miss a ball. Yeah. And as you say, of course, he, you know, he did. It is a, is a complete different yeah. skill. But you can, you can the, the pool you play, you can, can you use the same cue? In both so of, the in, English a pool, yeah, I use the same cue uh, because I have something that's around about in the middle. I play with about a nine mil tip, right. which coming from the Chinese game, uh, for English pool, it's probably the fraction on the big side. Right. Most English pool players will probably play with around eight mil. Okay. But coming from playing with 11 and a half at the Chinese pool, yeah. With those boulders, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I found as though the contrast was just too much. So I found something in the middle about nine mil, and I can play a bit of snooker with it as well. I mean, with the, the, the English pool with the cue ball being smaller, I mean, it's, top spin's got to be a problem, right? Yeah, top top spin's a problem because effectively what happens is when you play a top spin, the cue ball actually jumps back first yeah. before the rotations start to go forward. Yeah. So that's why mixing the cue sports, especially when you're playing a cue sport, whether cue ball is smaller and lighter than the object ball. Obviously the physics of the natural line, yeah. especially when you're under pressure, as you know, it might be okay in the, on the practice table and you think, yeah, I'm okay knocking a few balls around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to play a match in front of a you know, live audience on the TV or whatever, if you're not sure what's going on and you're second guessing where the cue ball's going, that for me is. But where were you aiming the cue ball when you were breaking off then with a the light cue ball? So amongst the, 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 the I think the, the big difference for me between pool players and snooker players or any other cue sport discipline is the break. Yeah. You know, I've seen most of the snooker players play pool and the thing they struggle with the most would be the break. Yeah, because I, I, I basically just got down and hit it as hard as I could. Yeah. With no, no, no thought to what I was yeah. doing. And what, what a lot of them do is that they hit the cue ball, the cue flies up in the air, so you're losing a lot of power effectively. Yeah. So what we try and do as players is drive down through the, what we call through the bed of the table. So that's where you get this bend, get this, pictures of the bend. Get this bend, and effectively what you're trying to do is keep the cue ball in contact with the front ball for as long as possible, so it's transferring all of the power through the pack. Okay, right. It's a bit of a tough blue. I'm right. They're, 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 they've changed a couple of rules in English pool, haven't they? To, uh, so yeah, they is changed. That, you is that know, so you can do this, like, the rolling up, the sort of rolling up stuff, the, the tippy tappy stuff? Yeah, that, and because is that for TV or is it just for TV? Um, uh, for TV, I mean, I'm sure m most people have had a game of English pool at some point because they're. Yeah, in well, you, you, you played a lot with Mark, so you, you, you've had plenty of this. So I'm just going to get granite. Just glue me <laughs> under the back rail. So yeah, yeah most players. No, you would be if you were playing Mark. Most players have had a game of English pool at some point, and I'm sure you know you you play in one pub or one bar. They're yeah. playing a set of rules. You go into the next one. They're playing a different or set. Two of shots rules. carry. Two shot carry. You stick. You know, there's there's been yeah. hundreds of different variations of rules at English pool, yeah. where now they've just bought one 
sort of set of rules that basically the rest of the world play. If you go to China, you go to North okay. America, South America, they all play yeah. the same set of rules, which make just a generic set of rules, basically. Yeah, yeah. And they are attacking, which you need, obviously, for live TV. Yeah. Great shot. So talking to China, as, as, as I said earlier, we've, we've been involved with the same company for, I mean, I've been to probably 60 cities. You must be pretty close to you. Yeah, I think I've done over 50 trips. Yeah. Um, and I think there was one year, I think it was 2017, I did uh, 102 flights in one year. Really? Yeah, I sort of <laughs> kept track of them and uh, yeah, the sort of stamps in the passport and stuff. So yeah, obviously, um, and I, I've now just signed a new deal again with Joy. Right. There's a five year sort of ambassador deal that will see me do another eight to 10 trips a year over the next and, and five years. Do you years. enjoy it? Do you enjoy China? I really, I enjoy it. Yeah. I struggled a little bit at the start with yeah the food and the whole culture, you know, everything's completely... Yeah, you're, not, you're not quite as adventurous as me sometimes with the food, are you? I'm <laughs> not, no. I, I'm, I'm a little bit better than I was. I remember when we right. first, you know, them, them, them early days, 2013, <laughs> 14, no, it was, you know, I, I was living on McDonald's and KFC. <laughs> I know, I, I, so when, when you were there, was that the first time you'd ever been in China then? That was the first time I'd ever been, yeah, which was, which was that Masters. And obviously, I, I didn't know anything about China. The only thing I knew about Chinese pool was that you'd signed, you'd signed a deal previously, uh, the year before, and you were playing some Chinese pool. So back then there was only a couple of videos on YouTube. Yeah. So I literally just watched a couple of your videos where you're playing some of the challenge matches. Yeah. And uh, the, way I, the way I practiced it, because obviously I didn't have a table then, the way I practiced it was, as I've said, it's a hybrid cue sport. So what I did was I just got the American pool balls and put them on the snooker table. Okay. And that's how I practiced it until I got a table. Right. Okay. And did, did, so it, for that first master, did Joy just approach you, so you and some of the other guys to play it? Yeah, so what happened with the some first Some of the American players played as well, didn't they? Yeah, what happened with that first masters was... So I think Ken Doherty played as well, Ken the first Doherty, one. so what they wanted was, because it is a hybrid Q sport, what they wanted was they chose, effectively, the best two players from English pool. Yeah. The best two players from American Pool Nine Ball. Yeah. They obviously had you and Ken Doherty at the time from the snooker background, and then they had, I think it was Callie Fisher and Karen Core yes, was yeah. the, the two. That was the yeah, eight. I remember, yeah. Because at that time they didn't actually know who would be good at Chinese pool because it appeals to everybody and it's got a bit of everything. Yeah. They were a bit like, will the snooker players be the best? Will the American players be the best? Will the English pool players be the best because it's eight ball and the patterns? Yeah. So that's what the first event was. I think, was. I think so when I first signed with Joy, they expected me to beat everyone. Yeah. But, I, but I'd, I'd obviously retired from snooker and I wasn't going to practice and everything. But I think because because I was losing, playing challenge matches and matches all around China, and losing oh, out of ten matches, I'd lose eight. Yeah. And they said, well, "Why are you losing?" <laughs> because I don't. Yeah, it's, it's a it's difficult not your, game. Yeah, it's not yeah, my it's game. Not, it's not your sport. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's how. Uh, so at the time, there was the myself and Mick Hill that were ranked number one and number two at the English game. Yeah. Uh, and then I think there was Darren Appleton, Chris Mallion that they had from the American, and yeah. Ralph Suke actually from the, the snooker, uh, the American pool. Earl, Stri Earl Strickland. Earl Strickland played in one of the years, didn't he? Nutcase. Yeah, absolute <laughs> lunatic. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this cuts or not. No, it didn't. I've seen you um, obviously at the Crucible a few times watching Mark. Yeah. You obviously, obviously, like like going to watch him. Yeah, I do, and um, you know I, I I've known Mark for a long time, way before. Obviously, you know my girlfriend Angie and Vicky are sisters. Yeah. Uh, but I knew him before he was oh, you know, okay. with Vicky. You know, I knew him from the English pool days. You know, he started his. Q Sports career playing English pool. So he oh, he played pool before. Yeah, snooker. he played. Yeah, oh, right. he played English pool. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, I knew he played pool, but I didn't think I didn't know it was before yeah, snooker. Yeah, played English pool, and there's a few players that have. The most recent one would be Joe O'Connor. Right. He started playing English pool, and actually, he was a really late starter in terms of how young players start yeah. these days at yeah, snooker. Yeah. He started at. Yeah, I think he went all through his junior days playing England and the, right. the eight ball, and then only recently swapped. Because Mark was, was Mark world champion. Yeah, 2006. Did you play in that? Uh, yeah, I played in that. Uh, I was actually defending champion, so right. I won it 2005. Uh, Mark won it 2006. And then I actually played him in the quarterfinals in 2007 when he was the defending champion. Right, okay. Yeah. So what's your highest break at snooker then? So, uh, playing on my own, I've had a couple of maxis. Right. Uh, 
against someone in a match. One four five. One four five. Yeah. That's impressive. But no, but it sounds, it sounds a bit patronised actually because with your cue action, you mean you obviously hit the ball properly and you were. It's no good, but that, you, two maxes. Oh, look at that! Was a horrible hit. Horrible hit. Did you play? Have you played in any comps? Like you know, I've comps? never ever played in one snooker comp ever. Really? No. And as I said, there was a time when I was gonna go down the snooker route, and you know, Mark had said to me loads of times, and. Back in the day when I, I used to practice, used to practice with Jamie Cope because he's from he's from here. I used to and Liam Highfield. So right. I've played with you know quite a lot of the you know the, the good yeah, snooker yeah. players. And Mark used to say to me, you know, why don't you just give the snooker a go? Maybe play the Q school. And I've just I, I reckon I reckon you could do you like something like the shootout. You could do really yeah, well because you're not slow you're, at all. Yeah, where you you know you, you know capable of making a frame winning break. Yeah, you know, yeah. just one that sort of stuff. Yeah. And obviously, the thing with the, the thing with the shootout is. At pool, especially now, you, you, it's match clock, shot clock. So you used to sort of running around like a lunatic, basically trying to hit, trying to hit the cue ball. Have you um, not got a world record or something to do with pool? So yeah, I think I've got the the world record of the the world world's quickest break and clearance, which was obviously in a live TV match. I think it was um, yeah, 28 seconds. To break off and pot, how many balls? So I should, I should know that really. Break off and pot. Uh, Eight balls technically, your seven balls in the eight ball, but I think I potted three or four balls from the break. Right, so okay. I think I actually potted like five balls or something in that time. Um. I mean, do you think? I mean, you think some sort of like Q sport thing should be in the Olympics? You know, the amount of like different yeah. disciplines there is. It's yeah, there is. Yeah, and uh, I think that's what they're campaigning for in China now is oh, to really? get the Chinese pool into like the World Games and stuff. Oh, how, oh dear, oh dear, and I fluked it. When you look at some of the sports that are in, in the Olympics, mm. I think even Barry, Barry said that as well. Shot. <gasps> oh, was that frame ball? <laughs> yeah, it's a black ball game. <laughs> uh, I'll go for the big shot. I don't, I mean, I, I suppose we're playing a black ball game, but I don't suppose in pool you ever get a black ball game, do you? Yeah, you do. Well, obviously both of you pot your suits and you end up, it, it's very rare with the yeah, standard. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. You know, if you were to miss the eight ball or your last ball, yeah. you, you're probably not going to come back to see the eight ball for you to be playing safeties on it, but um, it, it can happen. But, I mean, cause, but you guys are such good doublers, isn't it? I mean, I, I mean you'd be very little safety player, would there? Yeah, with yeah the doubles and um, obviously the top guys, their patterns are so good that once somebody misses the eight ball, um, it's very rare that they wouldn't be pretty perfect on the eight ball because you know the patterns are so good. <laughs> it could be here a while. <laughs> nah, you're gonna stroke this one in. Ooh. Wow. Ooh, you'd have crossed that one. Flukes allowed. This could be the longest black ball we've had in the YouTube, the YouTube history. Done. It is. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Enjoyed Thank that. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you.